Diane King Hall joins us from New York. Let's talk some Tesla. Diane, good morning. Yeah. Uh, good up 25 morning. bucks in like three days, Tesla, while the rest of the market yeah. kind of went into a meltdown mode. I know, exactly. And even when you see a little bit of pressure on the overall market today, Tesla is trading counter to that. Uh, here's the latest with regard to Tesla. Uh, it is revealing new plans. We'll call it a roadmap. They're calling it that, so we might as well stick with that for uh, FSD, full self-driving, right, to roll out in overseas in Europe and China by the first quarter of 2025. They've talked about that before. Now they're giving a timeline to this, a target for this, right? Uh, so this is their new timeline for FSD uh, overseas. And keep in mind, a good chunk of Tesla sales comes from overseas. In fact, about a fifth of its sales comes from China. Now, of course, this all hinges on regulatory uh, approval. Uh, so that is one of the things that they this hinges on, but they are expecting to get that. Uh, and in terms of the developments with regard to FSD overall, there's also expected to be an improvement in mileage for FSD. Uh, that includes here. They're planning to roll out FSD version 13 uh, next month uh, versus the current version that exists here. And sometimes you'll see complaints online about the range. Uh, so this is expected to address that. In addition to uh, the overall growth of FSD and the plans to roll it out overseas, the company's also planning on adding it to the cyber truck uh, very soon as well. So it's leading to an advance in shares uh, of Tesla today. I mean, as you mentioned, they've been gaining ground this week. So it's another boost for Tesla, especially when you think about the haircut that it took off the back of its earnings uh, when, you know, one, they didn't do as well as expected, but we know very much that Elon Musk likes to cast the future for the company. And so investors are kind of getting back in on these bets on the future of the company. Mm. This is pretty interesting uh, that uh, the stock has been moving counter to the uh, general tech market and other AI stuff. Uh, while these headlines are hitting, uh, I do still think there's a uh, underappreciated story here on the self-driving stuff, you know, given that everyone's so eager for AI-driven products, and we're kind of looking around, we're going, all right, where are the consumer products? We've got Microsoft Copilot, all right, fine, some people are buying that. we got the new iPhones coming out, we don't know who's going to be buying that. Google updated their phone, and then we've got Tesla, which has been like a decade in the making, revolutionizing like robotic cars you know like it seems like still they have something to contribute to this theme that the market has been very very cynical so far on their ability to deliver it's true, uh, but it looks like the demand picture is improving. And when we talk about the demand for EVs, it's not just here in the U.S. Again, the there's been an increase in demand in China. Well, I know we'll talk about NEO in a, a short while, uh, but you're seeing, you know, kind of uh, more record adoption there. So that's beneficial to Tesla as well. They may not be able to sell everywhere in China due to the, the, the regulatory climate and, you know, kind of uh, the government uh, being, say, a potential client. Uh, but the demand is there for Tesla overseas, so that is why they're also launching FSD there. The target, they've said now, is the first quarter of 2025. Okay. All right. Well, look, um, in the meantime, if Tesla's going to be able to try their uh, self-driving uh, in China next year and Neo's telling us uh, maybe that demand is firming here somewhat. Uh, that's not a bad little story for a sector that's been just demolished for the most part, which is China EVs over the past year. Neo trying to tick up this morning, 6.5% rally. Yeah, look, when you're looking at the ADR, it is on the move. They did better than expected uh, when it comes to their latest quarterly numbers. Adjusted EPS was when you translate it to dollars, a uh, loss of 30 cents a share. That was better than the expected loss there. Revenue came in at $2.4 billion. They had record deliveries for their premium smart EVs. Uh, they delivered more than 57,000 of them. Uh, the CEO pointing out that that uh, logs uh, accounts for rather 40 percent of market share in that segment in terms of what their guidance is their expectation is for sales between 2.63 and 2.71 billion that's for the third quarter deliveries are expected to come in between 61,000 to 63,000 units the expectation for Wall Street in terms of sales 
2.5 billion. So the guidance is better than what's expected. And the expectation for delivery is 57 thousand vehicles. So again, the guide for NEO is coming in better than expected. Uh, so they're not just performing better in what's essentially the rear view mirror. They're performing better in terms of what the expectation is for NEO. Okay. Well, this has been a big uh, disappointment, a series of disappointments. So uh, yeah. nice little beat. Guidance going in the right way. The Chinese stocks haven't been doing wonderfully. So maybe this will try and perk no. them up. But not a whole lot. FXI up 10 bips today. Been basically stuck in the same level for uh, much of the summer now into fall. Let's talk earnings from yesterday, Diana. Yeah. HPE and uh, C3AI both getting a hit pretty hard. C3AI yeah, worse, are. though, making a new low here on the last uh, 52 weeks. Yeah, C3 AI really being penalized. Again, even though they did better than expected, it's different metrics within both of these that uh, investors are disappointed with. With C3 AI, just an EPS was a uh, loss of five cents a share versus 13 cents expected, revenue 87.21 million. What's wrong here? It's that subscription revenue piece. The subscription revenue came in at 73 and a half million. The expectation was for more than 79 million. So there is some concern about that. And then overall, even for C3 AI, is this path to profitability? You recall they had, you know, previously predicted that they would be profitable uh, in 2024. They had taken that uh, off the table previously, so there was concern about that. And then you have analysts out today changing their price target off the back of these latest quarterly numbers piper sandler they are maintaining a neutral rating but they've reduced their price target to 24 bucks a share previously they had it at 29 bucks a share uh morgan stanley they have cut their price target to 21 bucks a share they're keeping an underweight rating on c3 ai needham they have reiterated a hold rating and you're seeing the stock being penalized right now down double digits down more than 11 percent oliver all right. Yeah, brutal. Now, obviously, very, very uh, uh, sharp market response in a stock whose ticker is AI. They are going to be taking the scalpel to the numbers, making sure that, uh, you know, the hype over the last year and a half was validated. I'm not sure it was. It just seems like a company still that's a pretty early on kind of in finding their footing. So still, you know, losing money while revenue is going up, and that's on the adjusted basis. So it's just not really fitting the market's right. priorities right now for cash flow and profitability. HPE, real quick, Diane, what do we got? I mean, the issue there is the gross margins. Yes, HPE posted a beat on adjusted EPS. On the top and bottom line, just EPS, 50, 50 cents a share, the expectation 46 cents a share. Uh, revenue topped 7.7 uh, billion. Again, that was better than expected, but gross margins were 31.8 percent. That's a drop from the same time a year ago, and it was below expectation. So it's being penalized for that. And we're seeing that within this space, uh, some of the, both HPE and some of its competitors have just seen reduced margins. Uh, some of that is because of the cost of the chips that they're, uh, that they're that they utilize, uh, and so that's reducing the margins that they saw when you compare it on a year-over-year -year basis. And investors disappointed in the numbers. A fee down six percent. All right, yeah, tough, uh, tough crowd right now for uh, anything related to uh, obviously the AI and the uh, cloud yeah. implications of uh, of the whole trend. All right, uh, operating margins right. not quite where the market wanted them. Thank you, Diane. Appreciate that. HPE down, not as much as AI though.